What's up? This is Professor Orgelis. This is my fourth video on my Amazon EC2 video series. In my last video, we configured a LAMP stack. In this video, we will create a Hello World page and connect to it via the browser. And in my next video, we will configure FileZilla to connect to our instance. Okay, let's get started. We've already created our server, uh, so you'll want to watch my prerequisite videos. Make sure you create your instance, you're able to connect to your instance, and make sure you configure that LAMP stack. Uh, and if you need help, you can always go to this here, checklist for starting your EC2. We ran these commands, install LAMP, make sure you start your Apache web server. We uh, open up the default landing page, and on this default landing page, you can see here that the public HTML directory is var www html so if I go there on my terminal I'm already logged in you can see my EC2 logo if I cd which is change directory forward slash var and here I just type in v and hit tab I'll let the terminal auto complete so there I type w hit tab I type h hit tab and now I cd into that directory you can see the html here you can also do a pwd which is the path if you are not able to change directory, so if you do not have this var www.html directory, then most likely you have not installed the LAMP stack. You've not installed the prerequisites. So you need to go back and run these three commands. Once I'm inside my public HTML directory, uh, I can create a page. So I could do a VI or a VIM, and let's say I do a hello world.html. And inside this hello world, let's just say I type in hello world. To start typing into the file, you need to click the I to insert. Now you can start typing. And then when you're done typing, you click escape, colon, WQ, and I try to save. Uh, you can do colon x or colon wq. Here you can see that the permissions were not allowed to write to this file because if we exit it and I do a list ls, okay, there's nothing in there. If I do go back one directory, do an ls, you can see the directories. If I do a list long, here is our HTML directory. The owner of the directory is root, and the group for the directory is root. And here you can see the permissions. You can see the D here, that's a directory. It has read, write, execute for the owner, read access, and execute access for the group, and then read and execute access for the world. So here you can see this two dashes, that's the right access. So the group does not have right access and the world does not have right access. And right now we're not in this group, so we're considered the world. So the only way that we're going to be able to write to that file is if the permissions are open. So here I can do sudo because that's not our directory, so I need to run it as an administrator. Let's say I do a sudo change mod, it will be 77 to HTML. And now I do a list long. You see I added the right access to the group. So if I cd into HTML and try to do a vi hello world. Okay, I still do not have that right access so I do not have the permissions to write into this file so what I need to do is open it up so that is why I have this command here in my checklist I have this command sudo change mod 777 to your public HTML directory this is not a good practice in a live application so if your server is live and it's available to the world you would not want to do this because then people could change your website if they're able to get onto your server but in a testing server, in a testing environment, it's okay to do this instead of altering the configuration file. In my next class, 
CS4830. Uh, we go over how to set up the server, how to create user accounts, how to change your public HTML directory, uh, and then we don't have to open it up like we're doing here. But this is a test server, so that's fine. So I can run that command, sudo change mod 777, which is read, write, execute for the uh, owner, for the group, and for the world to forward slash var www.html hit run now if I do a list long go back one directory and do a list long you see it's green and also all the permissions are open so if I cd back into my html and now I do a vi hello world that html I can type escape WQ for write and quit and now it will let me write to that file. So after I write that file I can come back to my EC2 management console copy my public DNS, go to it default landing page still opens up by default but if I put a forward slash here hello world.html you should see your page so here's the text we just typed uh, for the challenge. You want to make sure it's in the proper tags, uh, not just plain text there. Notice here in my URL, I did not have to type var www.html and then the file. And if I do this, it actually doesn't know what we're talking about. That's because the server is configured to go to this directory automatically. So this is our public HTML directory. In the configuration file, we tell the server to go to this directory automatically. Okay, and this is the default, so it goes there automatically by default, and it looks for this file name, so we do not need to include it. For if you're doing challenges, if you want to have all your challenges on the same server, you're going to want to make a directory, maybe like challenge 7. So you make a directory, mkdir, make directory, challenge 7, and I will copy my hello world into my challenge 7 directory. So now if I do a ls, I can cd into challenge 7, here's that same file. So now when you submit your challenges, you can just do challenge 7 here, and here's my hello world. So if you're not sure whether that changed or not, I can change the text in here a little bit. Okay, and here's that text. So for your challenge 7, you want to submit a URL that looks something like this. You want to be able to type challenge 7 and then hit enter. Okay, but our page isn't opening up automatically and that's something that you're going to want to figure out for the challenge and uh, for a hint you will want to look into the file names you want to look into the file names and see if that leads you in the right direction okay we have connected to our instance via SSH we went into our public HTML directory we changed the permissions and talked about why we needed to change the permissions we save the file and open it up in the browser so now we've successfully connected to our server from the browser to a actual HTML page okay so congratulations uh, in my next video we will configure FileZilla if you have any questions then let me or the TAs know you can also post a comment down below and uh, we'll see you in the next video